It's a cliche now. The Republican politician with an anti-gay voting record, or the Republican-aligned religious figure with an anti-gay preaching record, getting caught in a gay scandal. Recently, a new scandal has come to light, and this prompted me to do a little investigating, so I have assembled a group of those who have made the news that I consider to be members of the Republican Hall of Gay. Now, there are some restrictions to my list. There are a lot more, but I left out most of the minor players, local, states, supporting characters, and so forth. I also left out stone pedophile, since pedophilia has nothing to do with sexuality. Most pedophiles are heterosexual males, and that includes those that molest boys. I have also confined it to incidents that have happened since the year 2000. In 2003, the Republican mayor of Spokane, Washington, was outed by the newspaper, The Spokesman Review, which nailed him in a sting operation. They were investigating the connection between him and an accused child molester, David Hahn. The two had been friends and fellow police officers and were troop leaders for the Boy Scouts. Hahn committed suicide after being accused of molesting Boy Scouts. There was no evidence that West had ever acted improperly around Scouts, but the paper did discover his alter ego, user Cobra82 on Gay.com. For years, West, the former Republican State Senate Majority Leader, opposed gay rights bills. Yet after this came out, he complained about the sex Nazis who try to regulate private sexual behavior. As one commentator pointed out, for years that's exactly what West tried to do in Olympia. West has since died, so maybe he now has first-hand knowledge of what happens to gays in the afterlife. Personally, I think it's like a giant gay pride parade. In 2004, it was discovered that televangelist Paul Crouch, founder and former president to the Trinity Broadcasting Network, paid a former employee, Enoch Lonnie Ford, $425,000 to end a wrongful termination and sexual harassment lawsuit. One of the allegations is that Crouch had had a homosexual encounter with Ford. In his defense, it was pointed out that Ford was a convicted felon and not the most reliable person around. Now, the settlement wasn't actually in 1998, but I'm including it in this group because it wasn't discovered until 2004. In 2003, Ford threatened to release his autobiography unless TBN bought him off for a pretty large sum. Well, this landed in court for vi violating the terms of the original agreement, the $425,000 one, and the judge ruled in Crouch's favor since uh, Ford had signed a non-disclosure agreement to get the $425,000. Now, I'm sure that through the power of Jesus Christ, Crouch will be able to develop special relationships with his fellow Christian men and to be able to keep those relationships quiet. 2004 again. Hi, guys. I'm a married white guy. Uh, 6'4", 202, hazel eyes, blonde hair, real buffed up because I work out with a trainer. This is then Congressman Ed Schrock on a tape recorded from Megamate's Megaphone Line, a telephone service where men can meet like-minded fellows. He also noted that he was looking only for white guys with awesome bodies. Schrock was a congressman from Virginia who consistently opposed gay rights. He voted for the Homophobic Marriage Protection Act, was co-sponsor of the Federal Marriage Amendment to amend the Constitution that would prohibit lesbian and gay marriage, and to invalidate this other states' attempts to add civil unions for same-gender couples. What a charmer. Now that he's no longer burdened with the cares of Congress, maybe he has time to find that special white boy. Mark Foley. What can one say about Mark Foley? Friend of congressional pages everywhere. Pages served during their junior year of high school or the summers immediately before or after their junior year and must be at least 16. So we're talking minors here. Foley's escapades, or the airing thereof, took place over 2005 and 2006. Foley sent very suggestive and explicit texts to congressional pages. He later blamed it on alcohol. Foley was known for legislation targeting child predators, yet this is part of what he sent to a male page. What are you wearing? Normal clothes. T-shirt and shorts. Mmm, so big a bulge. Yeah. Mmm, love to slip them off you. Ha <laughs> ha. And grab the one-eyed snake. Grab. Not tonight. Don't get too excited. Well, you're hard. That's true. And a little horny. And also true. Get a ruler and measure it for me. I've already told you that. Tell me again. Seven and a half. 
Mmm. How he managed not to get arrested. Well, he was a congressman. I hear he's now settled down with a nice guy, and hopefully that will keep him out of trouble. The poster boy for gay religious scandals, Ted Haggard, got in trouble in 2006. It seems he'd been having a sex-for-money relationship with male escort Mike Jones. When Jones found out who Haggard was, he was appalled, saying, It may be angry that here's someone preaching against gay marriage and going behind the scenes and having gay sex. Jones made the allegations public in response to Haggard's political support for a Colorado amendment that was going to be on the November 7th Colorado ballot and it would ban gay same-sex marriage in that state. Haggard, who also used meth with Jones, wriggled, waffled, and stayed in denial as long as he could. Today he admits that he is bisexual and has publicly apologized for his previous positions for, on homosexuality. It's a shame that it took getting caught for Haggard to come to his newfound maturity. One could only wonder how many people he hurt before that came to pass. 2007 was a busy year for scandals, with a total of four, so in no particular order. One headline read, Cross-dressing state legislator blackmailed following late-night tryst. That would be Richard Curtis, a state representative in Washington State. He was caught on video entering and then leaving a hotel with another fellow. Other videos showed him leaving an envelope with payment for services rendered. Curtis was also reported to be fond of wearing women's lingerie. Not surprisingly, Curtis has an anti-gay voting record, voting against domestic partnerships for gays, and opposing a bill that would prohibit discrimination based on sexual orientation. Presumably, homosexual sex for money is okay with him. In one of those tawdry situations that conservatives always seem to fear, Florida State Representative Bob Allen was arrested for solicitation of prostitution from an undercover male officer at a park restroom. Yep, a restroom. Apparently, he offered to perform oral sex for $20. His response? Well, it probably had something to do with his being afraid of black people. Presumably, the officer was black. Now, this is an original excuse, and you got to give him points for that. What he doesn't get credit for is, of course, his anti-gay voting record. Convicted in 2007 and sentenced to probation and a fine, he then resigned from the Florida House of Representatives. It seems to me that if he was truly afraid of black people, he'd have offered the fellatio for free. <laughs> a sterling example of young Republican leadership and hope for the conservative future was Glenn Murphy, Jr. In 2007, young Mr. Murphy was charged with one of the more unusual actions in this list. It seems he had an overnight guest, said guest, awakening to find Mr. Murphy performing fellatio on him. Unwanted fellatio. Murphy was arrested for this, a Class B felony, namely criminal deviant conduct. Murphy had been the national chairman of the Young Republicans and chairman of the Clark County, Indiana Republican Party. He also was a political consultant for Republican candidates and often advised them to use gay marriage as a wedge issue to paint their opponents as out of touch with traditional values. So, getting a guy drunk and filleting him as a traditional value. Now we come to a classic. Larry Craig. Of all the self-hating, deep-in-denial homosexuals, Larry takes the urinal cake. On June 11, 2007, Craig was arrested at the Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport on suspicion of lewd conduct. It seems that Craig, while in a restroom stall, tapped the foot of the man in the stall next to him, a well-known signal for initiating homosexual contact. Unbeknownst to him, the other fellow was a police officer. The officer was sitting in the stall as part of an undercover operation investigating complaints of sexual activity in the area. He observed Craig lingering outside and frequently peeking through the crack in the door at him. Craig then entered the adjoining stall, and according to the officer, at 12.16 hours, Craig tapped his right foot. I recognize this as a signal used by persons wishing to engage in lewd conduct. Craig tapped his toes several times and moves his foot closer to my foot. The presence of others did not seem to deter Craig, as he moved his right foot so that it touched the side of my left foot 
which was within my stall area. Craig then proceeded to swipe his left hand under the stall divider several times with the palm of his hand facing upward. Craig stated he has a wide stance when going to the bathroom and that his foot may have touched mine. Now, Craig never actually used the word wide stance himself. According to the transcript of the police interrogation, when asked, did you do anything with your feet? Craig responded, position them. I don't know. I don't know at the time. I'm a fairly wide guy. Now, Craig pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor charge of disorderly conduct. All hell broke loose when this became public knowledge, Craig denying that he did anything wrong and stating he was not gay. At the time, Craig was a U.S. Senator from Idaho. He apparently tried to use his official Congressional ID to get out of the situation. It didn't work. First, Craig said he'd resign. He then filed to have his conviction overturned, claiming to be the victim of entrapment. The judge denied this. Then Craig refused to resign. Since then, other men have come forward stating that they had had sexual contact with Craig going back to when he was in college. A true scumbag, Craig, of course, had a record of supporting anti-gay legislation. He served out his term and didn't seek re-election, giving him, no doubt, more time to cruise public restrooms. David Allen Berlin was a small player in the Republican Party, but the story is too good to pass up, involving sex and corruption. He was an aide to State Senator Jane Ory of Pennsylvania. Ory was the majority whip in the Senate until April 7, 2010, when she stepped down from that post following her indictment on criminal charges. It, this followed an investigation involving the employment of one of her district offices for campaign purposes on her sister's behalf. Her sister was running for a judgeship. Now, according to Wikipedia, in March 2012, Ms. Ori was convicted of 14 counts of forgery, conflict of interest, and theft of services, which included five felonies. In May 2012, she resigned from the state senate. On June 5, 2012, Ms. Ori was ordered immediately into custody instead of being allowed to self-report, as most people usually were. She was sentenced two to five to 2.5 to 10 years in prison and she is currently incarcerated at the State Correctional Institute at Muncie Lycoming County. Now, I don't know Ori's or Berlin's exact position on gay rights legislation, but they're Republicans, so one can guess. David Allen Berlin himself was arrested in 2009. It seems that he's a furry. Well, there's no problem with that. But he contacted a 15-year-old boy over the Internet and offered to yiff the boy in a panda outfit. In other words, he offered to have sex with the boy while dressed as a panda. And he offered to do this while the boy's parents were at home, so he knew this was a young person. His online screen name was Alan Panda Bear, and he was also known as Furry Panda. Apparently, the two met on a furry online site. It is also alleged that Berlin offered to arrange a meeting in a hotel room so that he could take photographs of the boy and another adult having sex. The boy's parents discovered the graphic emails on the boy's computer, contacted the authorities, and Berlin was arrested. He was then found guilty of three felony counts in March of 2012, getting 6 to 12 years in prison. Sadly for Furry Panda, they don't allow fursuits in prison. But maybe he'll become someone's precious panda bear anyway. 2010 starts with a real creep and ends with an okay guy. George Allen Reekers is one of the vilest creatures on the planet. He is not just anti-gay, but an anti-gay activist. And not just an anti-gay activist, but a deceptive, lying proponent of conversion therapy. Let me read you his credentials from Wikipedia. An American psychologist and ordained Southern Baptist minister, he is Emeritus Professor of Neuropsychiatry and Behavioral Science at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine. Rikers has a Ph.D. from the University of California, Los Angeles, and has been a research fellow at Harvard University, a professor and psychologist for UCLA and the University of Florida, and department head at Kansas State University. In 1983, Rikers was on the founding board of the Family Research Council, a nonprofit Christian lobbying organization. 
and he is a former officer and scientific advisor of the National Association for Research and Therapy of Homosexuality, an organization offering conversion therapy intended to chain homosexuals into heterosexuals. Rikers has testified in court that homosexuality is sinful and destructive and against parenthood by gay and lesbian people in a number of court cases involving organizations and state agencies working with children. So he knows better. He knows the studies, but ignores them because his religious beliefs triumph all. He is not, also not surprisingly a self-hating gay. In 2010, it was discovered that Reekers returned from a 10-day trip to Europe with a male escort he found on rentboy.com. Reekers said that he hired the boy, a 20-year-old named Lucian, to carry his luggage. Interestingly, in the picture of the two at the airport that was uh, repeated in uh, newspapers and websites and on television everywhere, it's George handling the luggage while the escort looks on. He also claimed that he was trying to save the boy's soul. Lucian said he was paid to provide Reekers with nude body rubs and sexual massages. Guess which one I believe. You don't hire an assistant of rentboy.com to handle your luggage unless you mean your special luggage. In 2010, conservative Republican California State Senator Roy Ashburn was arrested for drunk driving after leaving a gay bar faces in Sacramento. Ashburn repeatedly voted against gay rights, including expanding anti-discrimination laws, establishing a day honoring Harvey Milk, and recognizing out-of-state gay marriages. He pled no contest to drunk driving, receiving probation and 48 hours in jail, as well as some fines. In March 2010, Ashburn came out as being gay, and has increasingly spoken out on gay rights. Ashburn ran for county sur supervisor in Kern County this year. And there was no clear winter, winter, and there will be a runoff election in November. Good luck, Roy. 2011. Puerto Rico Senator Robert Arango is something of a shutterbug. He uploaded a number of pictures, some explicit, to a Grindr account. Not surprisingly, Arango has an anti-gay voting record, including voting in favor of a proposal that would block any attempt to permit same-sex marriages in the Puerto Rico. He also helped block a measure to ban sexual discrimination in the workplace and opposed adoption rights for gays. When confronted about the scandal, the man actually all said, You know, I've been losing weight. As I shed that weight, I've been taking pictures. I don't remember taking this particular picture or that. I'm not going to say I didn't take it. I'd tell you if I remember taking the picture, but I don't. Now, does this include the butt pic? I mean, did he lose weight in his asshole? Also in 2011, we have Indiana State Representative Philip Henkel, a Craigslist fan. He answered an ad by an 18-year-old man on Craigslist with, Cannot be a long-time sugar daddy, but care for tonight. Then says he wants to make it worth your while in cash and offers a personal description. I am an in-shape, married professional, 5'8", fit, 170 pounds, and love getting and staying naked. And presumably not at work. He offers the 18-year-old $80 and then points out that if he has a really good time, there might be 50 to $60 more. I wonder what Hinkle considers a really good time. He later offered cash, an iPad, and a Blackberry to keep the boy quiet once the kid realized who Hinkle really was and tried to back out. Hinkle says he isn't gay. Apparently, he just plays that way. Now, today, in 2012, we have a new candidate. Former Republican Florida Governor Charlie Crist. It is reported that he had paid two men to cover up gay affairs. This was revealed during an investigation of former Florida chairman of the Republican Party, Jim Greer. Crist denied that he had any knowledge of Greer's wrongdoing. But an attorney for Greer said that Crist did know, and he threatened to impeach Crist's testimony by pointing out, 1. Charlie Chris was a homosexual and had homosexual relationships with at least two men who had later paid to leave the state to avoid embarrassing the then governor. Two, Governor Chris kissed or attempted to kiss Greer at a hotel in Beverly Hills, California. Three, Governor Chris ex drunken escapades at how Governor Chris' security detail had to cover for him. Four, 
Governor Christ attempting to run people over while intoxicated and operating a golf, golf cart. An attorney for Chris said if Chris were homosexual, well, why would he try to kiss Greer? Specifically stating, he would have to be a sick son of a bitch to try to kiss Porky Pig, in reference to Greer. Well, we'll have to see how this plays out. In the meantime, th th that's all, folks.